Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Dan. And today, as you can see, I'm still continuing my Disney movie marathon where I talk about their movies, shows, programs, documentaries, I don't know, whatever the case may be. So I just figured I'll just do this real quick. Okay, it's not gonna be quick. This is gonna be a long video, so I appreciate anybody for tuning in, I guess. So there's that. And yeah, here's a game I've been playing on my other channel, my original one, so I'm gonna do it this time around for my for my second channel. So there you go. So I guess let's try to make some sort of process. I'll be talking about I uh, like this while I'm at it, I guess. Since it has some relations to do with Frozen in some ways, I guess. And like, so they really do a part three and whatnot. And discuss, you know, there's a number of different things and whatnot. So I just figured I'd just do this. And because like I always believed in is, is to have a good story, even if it's animated. Yeah, well, you know, plot is does matter. I know a lot of people just want to see, you know, things happen, like a lot of fight scenes or whatnot. I just, like, do, like, a whole Michael Bay thing, you see, Michael Bay thing where you just see a bunch of explosions just just because, which is stupid. Anything about it? Yeah, he, Michael Bay can't direct good movies. He can't direct himself out of a paper, paper bag, so it seems kind of odd that he got to be popular, I guess. So, but anyway, just, uh, just want to discuss, like, a number of different things throughout this little, uh, playthrough-ish kind of thing, whatever you want to call this. So, there you go, I guess. So, let's just have at it, I suppose, because, like I said, this, this is not going to be a short video, like, at all. And I appreciate anybody for watching ahead of time, so here we go. But, yeah, anyway... I was saying, so they really do a third one? I don't know. I think, I, honestly, I think this should, it should be left alone, really. If you ask me. It, should, it shouldn't be messed with. So, and I highly doubt that the um, part three could actually be a happen. Uh, a lot of people s assume it will, because the thing is that uh, the actress who voiced the grown-up honor. Yeah, I'm saying that specifically because they had a a kid actress who do the voices for you know little Elsa and a little Anna, and the grown-up actresses did the voices for the characters of Elsa and Anna when they were older, of course. But anyway, that aside, just thought I'd clear that up. But anyway, the actress who voiced the the grown-up Anna stated that part three could happen, but a lot of people just took that as confirmation. Oh yeah, it's gonna happen, yeah, yeah. Not really. My point being is that there's a lot of vague information going on. There's lots of vague information. And out there, like, the actress who voiced grown-up Elsa stated that, okay, this is a video I've already discussed already, so excuse me if I'm being a little Bit, uh, if I'm dismissing a bit of here, folks, because I'm not gonna cover something too much. I've been talking about. I mean, I guess I kind of would, I guess. But point being is that the actress who voiced grown up on uh, and Elsa did bring this up as the possibilities, I guess. But the thing is that the lady who voiced Elsa, the grown up one, stated that Elsa is running through her head, talks to her from time to time. Whatever that means. And, yeah, that doesn't really answer anything, because it was brought to our attention as well. Would there be a third movie? Would there be a continuation and whatnot? That doesn't answer anything, like, at all. But anyway, the thing is that it's quite obvious, it, it was also quite obvious that these movies were never planned, like, at all. I mean, yeah, they were successful, but they didn't know that. They didn't know at the time that these movies wouldn't be successful, like, at all. They, they didn't know. They didn't know. Frozen 1 and 2, yes, of course, became massive, massive successes, with number 2 making more money than the first film. And the first film became one of the highest grossing films of all time for the studio. And again, they didn't know that, they didn't have no idea that this was going to actually be a success, like at all. Well, 
you know, that's what you have to do at times. You don't take a risk. You have to do that. That's what this film industry is built upon, taking risks. Of course, like, nobody asked for this movie. Okay, movies, I should say. No, Nobody asked for them. Like, literally no one asked for them. Like, at all, but here you are. I mean, yes, the princess stuff is pretty popular and whatnot. But they could have easily, they could have just as easily just made another movie. And this movie, the first Frozen film, almost never happened. Like, at all, because it was stuck in deliverment limbo. No production hell. Don't call it like that. For, for like about roughly 75 years. Because the thing is that Walt Disney wanted to make it himself. Okay, I've already, I've discussed this too already a while back. So, I'm not talk about it too much, really. But yeah, Walt Disney himself wanted to make this movie, but it was a, uh, unfortunately there was a number of complications that got in the way, which prevented him from actually doing it. It kind of reminded me of what happened uh, to his version of Alice in Wonderland, because the thing is that Walt Disney himself, when he was alive, he always wanted to do Alice in Wonderland. But again, a number of things got in the way, unfortunately. But yeah, the thing is that it took him about, what, roughly 20 years to actually make uh, Alice in Wonderland to unfortunately become a box office failure. But the thing is, the weird part is that Alice in Wonderland, among other titles, were later re-released and actually became bigger hits later on. So yeah, the Alice in Wonderland, the Disney's version, it's like one of those cases where it was a failure and a success. What the hell? Anyway, but like I said, yeah, Frozen 2 was not planned, but it made a lot of money anyway. It was, it was a success. Yeah, it showed that you can actually turn this into a franchise. Does this mean there could be a part of 3? Maybe? It could perhaps make it be a part of 3, I guess. But plans for follow-up for a potential part 3, uh, that, that can be a problematic in some ways. Because the thing is that, what can you do? What can you possibly do? From this point forward, I don't know. What, what can you do? What exactly can you really do, folks? I have no idea. And what, what's the hook here, really? What, what, this can, what can you have as a possible hook here, really? What, what can you do? And the case of thing is that I mean, they, they found a way to make a uh, second movie because when you think about it, how is that? How is it that Elsa has powers, but but uh, the younger sister on a done doesn't. One sister has powers, but the other one does. That seems like a major plot hole. You think about it. But then again, the, the but matter of fact, they actually use that as a plot line for second movie. They, yeah, they actually use as in case anybody didn't watch these movies, they actually used that as a plot line for the second movie to explain away, you know, how and why does Elf, Elsa has all these powers, but not her younger sister. Yeah, he has something to do with the family tree and whatnot, and the enchanted forest. Excuse me if I'm being a bit vague here, because I know not everybody has seen these movies. So, uh, excuse me if I'm glancing over quite a bit of stuff here. But anyway, but yeah, my point being, what's the hook? What could be possibly the hook to get people interested in watching, you know, the third part? So, yeah, Elsa is the queen of, of Arendelle, of course, and she started to hear mysterious voices coming around in the second movie, and upon hearing these voices and answering them, Elsa is pretty much forced upon to go on his quest and whatnot. Of course, they have to pretty much ensure the protection of their kingdom, make sure everything's safe, of course, and... Frozen 2 actually performed quite well at the box office. It made a lot of money. Like we're saying, it made more money than the than the um, first film. So yeah, she. W the thing is that he also has something to do with the Enchanted Forest, pretty much and whatnot. I mean, again, excuse me if I'm being too specific because I know I don't want to spoil it, really, folks. But. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil them in you know, some plot points when it comes to these movies, because I know not a whole lot of people have seen these movies, like, at all. But, so yeah. So if you've never seen these movies, at, like, at all, I'm not going to spoil it for you, so don't worry about it. And of course, those characters like Kristoff, of course, you know, what can you, maybe 
I know, one thing I definitely spoke about before, where the... Uh, I did like a separate video a while back, because there were some articles that suggested maybe the focus could be Kristoff himself. And whatnot, so, I don't know. So, I mean, like his family, his family could be the focus, like who is his biological parents? Who are they? Who is his mother? Who is his daddy? Does he have any sisters? Does he have any uncles? You know, stuff like this. I mean, you could talk about that, but what would be the point, really? Why does this have to be a thing? And uh, whatnot. So, there's that. So, I don't know what would be the point, really, if you want to focus upon them. Okay, one thing I can definitely say, folks, is that... Uh, I gave Frozen 2 uh, quite a bit of credit because when it comes to making a good sequel, you're supposed to expand upon on what already has been done. What can you do that's already been done and expand upon what has been done previously? And, and that's the kind of thing you should do. That's why I was bringing the whole or trying to bring up the whole origin story of her powers and whatnot. Why did she have him and not her sister? And that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. So. Anyway, but yeah, that's the thing I want to speak about. So they expand upon uh, on that kind of a thing. So again, what what would be the point of making part three? Why? So yes, ultimately, uh, as ever it wasn't obvious enough. What would be the point of making a part three? What's the end goal here? I don't know. So okay, I don't. I don't. I think it's unlikely that the DC Studios would decide to not revisit the Kingdom of Arendelle in some form or another, whether it's animated short, uh, and whatnot, because I know a lot of people won't mind doing uh, an expanded universe, like Star Wars, uh, and whatnot. But I guess for all the Frozen movies have kind of done that already in some ways, because those, those lines of comics, those bunch of shorts, TV shows, several novels, so, yeah, the Frozen movies already kind of did like an expanded universe kind of a thing, as I guess in some ways, I suppose. I kind of did that, like to some extent, I guess. So, but yeah. So does this mean they could do a part three? Maybe? May could? Probably, I guess. But the thing is that, again, like I said, what would the point? However, given the current state of Elsa and Anna's respective storylines, what had happened in, you know, in part one and part two. Again, I'm not going to give away any specific details, really, because I know not everyone has seen these movies. But point being, considering what had happened in these two movies, a third entry to the franchise could see maybe the introduction of new enemies maybe that the fans have never seen before and perhaps could but uh there's not much i guess you can say in regards of our third movie so there could be a possibility and a cool roll out yet really of not i've not made a part three because it's been what like what maybe six years a six year gap between the two films so, yes, both films can be critically acclaimed and whatnot, but I just, story-wise, I don't see why they should. As far as bring up the Kristoff, the character Kristoff, why should they have uh, uh, be focusing on him? Some people say maybe maybe his parents, who is his parents really, and whatnot. Oh, and speaking of relatives, in the first Frozen film, they said that the character of uh, Hans had like eight brothers. You could have focused on them. But then again, what exactly would be the point of that? I mean, of course, you have to make it feel like it's connected to the first two movies. Of course, it'll make it a, a sense of connection in some way, obviously, for whatever reason, I guess. But. That's kind of the weird part, is that how can you do that without making it seem pointless? Make it different enough. Make it different enough that it won't feel like complete rehash. And, but then again, make it similar enough as well that it won't come, won't come out too different. Maybe it's like somewhere in between. Maybe, I guess. I have no idea. 
but yeah, there's a thing, folks, with that. And I've seen a lot of sequels out there that that's just basically just a rehash of the first movie. Or second, and then if they make a part two, it's basically the first one again. If they make a part three, it's basically part two again. If they made a fourth, a fifth, sixth movie, it's basically just rehashing the exact same movie again and again and again and again. So, again, I have to ask if they make Hans, or at least his brothers anyway, as the main focus of the story, what can they do with these characters? His brothers, like revenge? Kind of a thing, even though a revenge kind of thing is pretty cliched or anything, but I'm not too keen on revenge stories, really. But that can be pretty cliched when you think about it. So, I don't know. There was that. Uh, but I'm just gonna start scratch my head. What can't be positive done? You know, Hans was not in the second movie. Another character that did not appear in the second movie was the one dude, um, Reaser Town. Yeah, the one Duke, uh, Duke of Reaser Town. I think that's his name. Yeah, Duke of Reaser Town. Uh, he did not appear in the second movie, so there was that, I suppose. And, but yeah, maybe he wants revenge? No, again, like, to the whole revenge thing. That, that come, that's, so, there's that. I don't know. I don't know what they could do, exactly do, really, so... But, uh, just arms up in the air, this kind of thing. Alrighty. So, yeah, that's the thing, folks. I don't know, just... There's a lot of questions how to be asked here. Lots of lots of questions. So, yeah, the thing is, uh, so they do something with, uh, with the character of Anna. Again, I'm referring to, I'm, I'm really trying to be careful not to spoil anything really, folks, because, again, I know not a whole lot of people have seen neither movie, uh, like, at all. So, I'm just trying to really get, be careful how I word what I say in here, folks. I'll be really, really careful. So, should part three be centering around Anna? Consider I'm referring to the ending of part three. Referring to that again, I'm being vague on purpose because not everyone has seen uh, the movie. So, and that's kind of the thing. So, she be the primary focus of the movie, the third one. And um, so, I don't know. Should uh, uh, Frozen 3 be like a big opportunity for 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 Anna more than Elsa I don't know I know a lot, a lot of people have uh, liked Elsa quite a bit despite the character despite the fact the character of Anna being a major part in both films in more ways than one so yeah that's the thing that's the thing yeah I guess to really make her be the center stage of the third movie, like really make her be the center stage. And you know the other two movies in a lot of in Frozen One and Two uh, really had a lot of plot points, a lot of uh, events surrounding Elsa because of her powers, her inner conflict, and whatnot. And yes, while the character Anna did play a, a supporting key role in these stories yes that's true even with some of the other stories as well like in the books and whatnot but frozen 3 could be honest time to shine i guess to come to front and center or receive the same kind of care and uh character treatment that you know elsa have been given uh, i guess in, i guess twice in some ways i guess uh, she was definitely a major, Elsa was definitely a major part in the second movie. Again, referring to the whole power thing I reviewed. I've mentioned, uh, a moment ago, and it's revealed as to why she has these powers. And in the first movie, Elsa did have this lack of control, a power which just, of course, causes a major threat to Arendelle in the first movie. And what, now a lot of people kind of know, like, you know, witch, uh, witches, you know, sorcery and all that. You've been paranoid in the first movie, and it hasn't come to terms with her anguish of her childhood to save a, to save people. Maybe it, if you get to, uh, control enough, I guess, from certain death, from certain doom, and whatnot. I guess it depends on what's going on, I guess. But the sequel tries to do this. It's kind of uh, trying to show her inner struggle in some ways, so that these characters are older, more mature, that they grew. 
an emotional level, not just physically, but mentally, they grew on a, uh, on a, an emotional state, more, they grew as people, not just physically, I mean, like, you know, like a, an adult should, when you think about it, but yeah, this is trying to grow, they grew in more ways, than, this is close all off, of course, in, in his own way, and Kristoff, and all of them, and whatnot, so, this could be a way to, uh, show that, Anna could be important, and of course, Anna had to help Elsa to serve her purpose, of course, and whatnot. Again, I'm really trying not to get too specific with certain plot points in both films because I'm really trying to make sure not to spoil anything. Excuse me I'm, if I'm kind of repeating myself there, folks, but yeah, that's the thing. Uh, I normally I don't like doing spoilers really like at all I normally don't like doing that like really not really like at all because yeah I just want to give a, a general idea what the story is and uh, what the plot is about or whatever but then that's the thing I typically don't do that I mean I've, I've done spoiler spoiler videos before I have but I've done this kind of videos before we talk about you know really spoiler kind of stuff but I, I haven't done it too often, really. But I don't know, maybe just me. I don't like doing that, really. Because I'm not, I know a lot of people have not seen every single movie I've seen. And I like to talk about movies on, uh, on this channel, of course. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm talking about a lot of movies. And whatnot. That's what I do here. So, anyway. But as I was saying, Frozen 3 could be as a good way to introduce. You know, more opportunities for Anna. And uh, when you think about it, yes, Anna has been out of support system enough throughout the movies. And she's a great character. Her, she could have her own dreams, her own desires, her own hobbies. Like, what does she like to do in her spare time? The, does she like to read? Does she like to write? Does she like to paint? And, you know, stuff like this, you know, the other thing about it, stuff like this, of course, and, and, uh, but yeah, this, uh, could be a good way, of course, again, especially considering what happened in part two, at the end of part two could be used as a way to explore more about the government, more about politics and whatnot, and, which does make sense, uh, uh, one thing that does get, uh, the thing I want to say for a quick moment here, one thing I definitely want to say is that the one thing that does get brushed over quite often when it comes to reviewing these princess movies, not just Frozen, but just any, literally any princess movie when it comes to Disney, and one thing I definitely want to bring up is that the whole political stuff gets brushed over, which in itself I kind of think is kind of odd, because princess, the princess character is not part of the government. I guess like the parents, because you know the parents are supposed to be part of the you know the government as well. They're like I guess they're more in higher ranking, and they are I guess when you think about it, uh, because the parents are just you know these kings and queens and uh, whatever. I guess technically that's Elsa in the in the first movie, of course. But still, and her sister is a princess, but you still get my point here. They're they're part of the government in one way. You couldn't use. Uh, this has a way to explore this more often with uh, certain characters uh, to talk about, you know, maybe there's a conflict between nations and whatnot. I mean, of course, you can still have some some sort of venture of some kind somehow, really, but I'm not sure how this could work out, really, but but of course, uh, but that's the thing. That's the thing. How, what can you do exactly? With this coming, what comes this kind of thing? With Frozen One and Two, it's quite obvious that they they do have some sort of minority. So it's kind of like a diplomacy kind of a thing. Um, that's what I'm. Uh, excuse me if I'm just speaking like simpler terms, guys. But things like that, I can easily make uh, an entire video just speaking about minority. Because minority is kind of like a diplomacy kind of thing. Yeah, a lot of people don't bring this up really when we talk about these movies, like at all. Is odd. A minority is supposed to be this kind of form of government in which a person, a minority, is the head of state for life until, for whatever reason, I guess. Uh, the political, uh, some sort of political leniency, I suppose, and authority of the, uh, of this may vary from 
place to place, I guess. And we comes out. There could also be different forms of this as well, folks. It doesn't have to be one specific type of form to be more exact, I guess. But yeah, this dude, of course, you're gonna be like a self uh, proclaimed, maybe kind of thing, maybe. But the thing is that I was saying this kind of thing may vary from various titles, just as emperor, empress, king, queen, this kind of stuff, of course. And have I'm some sort of um, personal unions, obviously. Monarchies were a common thing, form of government until the, what, the 20th century, by which things did, did change, obviously. But, uh, but yeah, this kind of thing could, um, could work, depending how it's done. And, yeah, could Frozen 3 explore this a bit more? Maybe they could, I guess. I don't know. If done right, I suppose. I mean, I don't know what could do exactly. Uh, you, you can still use this as a way to, I guess you can say, make Anna, you can still make Anna be the main character in part 3, and whatnot, and make her the central role, I guess you can say. Uh, I don't know how exactly to do that, I don't know in which way really, but there's that. I don't know how that could work, really. So, yeah. I don't know how could it could work with Elsa being on a sidelines. Does this mean Elsa would be on the sidelines? Maybe. I guess. So, yeah. But I don't know. It's just, um, just scratch my head here, folks. I'm just trying to scratch my head on what the group possibly be even do, really. I actually wouldn't mind seeing Anna being, of course, the main character, like the really main main character in part three, that would be fine with that. Because we and you know, there could be a, a, as an opportunity to talk about like the, how the market Narki would be set up, like it's a political system based upon some uh, some rules of a single person. This term uh, applies to the to states in which supreme authority is in the march, I guess you can say, and in this visual ruler. Who performs functions as the head of state, so to speak, and yeah, who pretty much uh, goes on his or her precision throughout, you know, some sort of you know thing here. And yes, of course, this I guess in this case it goes on the royal family. When you think about it, of course, and I kind of wish they could have explored that a bit more in both films. If I'm honest with you, I really do think that's kind of a bit of a missed opportunity, really, in some ways. They really could have, you know, saw that, obviously. And, uh, yeah, be supported by the their immediate family, obviously, with their uh, being graceful, some sort of elegancy, and, of course, the castles and whatnot. And, yes, when you think about it, having a monarchy, it's, like, one of the oldest forms of a government. When you think about it, uh, a king or queen would be the head of state, of course, when you think about it, but... So, yeah, it just, just feels like the movies could have really gone on that, really. And you can use Anna as a way to talk about this a bit more. Now, again, I'm referring to the ending, what had, the, the ending had done with the character. Again, I'm not really trying to not, uh, talk about what happened specifically. Again, excuse me if I'm repeating myself, folks. But, so yeah, this seems like a, a good chance to do so. So... Yeah, it just makes me wonder what else can be done when you think about it. What else can be done with these characters? How can these characters grow even further? Like I was saying, I give the second movie credit that it expands upon on what order it is done. But what I'm saying is that you don't want to make part three just seem like a, some quick cast grab and, and nothing more. You just want to what actually have a point to it. Not just there to be to be there, or just do it, just do it, of course. Which in a lot of cases does happen. Disney is guilty of this. Just making sequels, just for the sake of making sequels, just to be nothing more than a cast grab, but nothing more. I mean, they're guilty with, with making too many sequels, 
or prequels or remakes. Yeah, they're definitely guilty with this remix. I don't want to see no remix. Like I told you before, folks, I I hate remix. Remix are are, are automatically garbage as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, they made remakes just to just to be nothing but a cast grab. Sequels were just done so to be nothing but a cast grab. Same thing with the prequels, spin-offs, in between movies, or whatever you want to say. That's how that's how they are. They just exist just to be nothing more than cast grab. What I'm getting is that why I do like Disney movies, but well, if I'm gonna be really honest here, folks. They're, they're terrible of making franchises. They're really awful of trying to make a franchise from the ground up. So yeah. And yeah, that's the thing. Just that's like the truth where they were folks. They're not good with making franchises. And this was not a stab towards the Star Wars sequel trilogy. I mean maybe I'm a minority in this, but I actually did enjoy the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Yeah, they're good movies. Even though the fan base, well at least most of it, absolutely despised it. Which I don't understand why. I'm gonna say that Disney ruined their um their childhood. Which is ridiculous because your childhood's still happening, you know. Anyway, I'm not gonna make this about that really at all. But point being, I, I like I like doing, I like the talking about Star Wars movies. Star Wars sequel trilogy, they're good. I, I liked it. Like I said, I liked it. But anyway, some people felt that both Frozen films one and two kind of felt like, uh, you know, have uh didn't deserve. Uh, did they uh, felt honor that was left, uh. They could have done more. That's what I'm getting. I could have done more with with Anna. And some, I think, I think the movies did fine with Anna, but they could have done more, I guess. So, does this mean they could have like a war? Maybe I have no idea. So again, I know I keep saying a bunch of I don't knows. I, I realize that. So uh, another thing I want to bring up real quick is that. Probably the most common thing, okay, something I don't, I'm, I don't want to bring up, talk about too much really, because I'm honestly getting tired of talking about it over and over. I feel like I'm being re way too much, way too repetitive on this subject matter specifically. Having a uh, Elsa have a romantic partner, whether it's female or male, but uh, of, of course, a lot of people want her to be a lesbian. Lesbian. Like I guess I don't want to get too much into this. Uh, too much really and like because of the fact like I said I, I mentioned this too often really in my uh, I lost count how many videos I made about the subject matter but point being I'm kind of iffy on this I'm like I don't I, again yes I, I said this way too much at first yes at first I was yeah sure go ahead let's make her a, I just have her be a lesbian I, I'll force I'm off that was all for it but then as time goes I don't know I don't, I don't think so. Not that they're in this wrong with lesbians, of course. There's nothing wrong. Lesbians are people, too. They have emotions. They have feelings like everyone else. And that, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But it's been two movies already. So it will come out like out of nowhere in some ways. When you think about it, it will come out just out of nowhere, really. So, and like I said, uh, just a few moments ago, there's already several books few comic book lines, some swords, so yeah, this was just, you know, come out of nowhere, like literally out of the blue, but um, but yeah, I don't know, having her be a, a lesbian, I don't know, maybe just shooting, I guess, because like I said, it just feels out of nowhere, and way out of nowhere, like, well, like, what, what, what was this, because the thing is that in both Frozen films, I also didn't have no rom romantic partner, again, male or female. I mean, yes, these movies were criticized for that, but I think at the same time, they were also praised for that as well. Yeah, that, that's weird when you think about it. They were criticized and praised for the same for, for that, for the same thing. I guess some people uh, out, out there, they like the fact that she can be an independent woman. She doesn't have to have a partner. Again, regardless if it's female or male. She can have her own a thing going on. I mean, yes, to be fair, not every single character in existence needs to have a relationship. And yes, also to be fair, not everyone in the in the in the real world, not everyone 
is designed to have a relationship. Not that there's anything wrong with having relationships, whether, you know, straight, uh, bisexual, or whatever. Not that there's anything wrong with that either. There's nothing wrong with having a relationship, regardless of all that. That's fine. It's not a rant to uh, on relationships. Don't get me wrong. I mean, okay, yes, that's funny coming from me because, like I said quite a few times before, yeah, obviously, that's funny coming from me because, like I was saying, I have had eight different marriages that all failed. But I was I was around for a long time, folks. I'm a, I'm I am over 100 years old, so you know, keep that in mind. But anyway, not everybody wants to get married. Realist realistically speaking, not everybody wants to get married, ever. And there's been a lot of divorces too, when you think about it. Because the, the, the desire to, there to be married was never there in the first place. Some people felt like they were... Some people felt like they were forced to get married in a lot of ways. But then it just broke up. There's it like a whole complication there. But, um... A lot of people felt that might. Well, I'm getting that. A lot of people felt that Frozen Three could be a perfect opportunity for the LGBT plus community to have a, some sort of representation of a part of that community and whatnot. And Disney has not confirmed that this can be canon. I mean, yes, yeah, there's a lot of fan fiction showing this, of course. But yeah, Elsa isn't shown to have any romantic relationships throughout the Frozen franchise, like in any shape or form. I think nothing that's canon anyway. I mean, yes, there's lots and lots and lots and lots, 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 lots of fan theories suggesting that she is a lesbian. But that's just theories. I don't count theories. Theories are no, not that important as far as I'm concerned. Just the theories, they don't confirm anything. I need the movies themselves to, um, I need the movies themselves to tell me that uh, all these implied anyway anyway moving on from that like I was saying I, I'm really, I, I really don't think this should be a part three uh, I got all because there's a whole bit of the third part curse like Superman Superman 3 was bad Spider-Man 3 wasn't very good late 3 Matrix 3 and, uh, and the Godfather 3 wasn't really looked upon that highly really and yeah, there was that, so uh, maybe they shouldn't. I was saying way earlier, Disney is not really known for making good franchises like at all. Uh, the Return of Jafar was pretty bad. The Jungle Book 2 was just okay. And then there's Pocahontas 2, which was not that good of a movie, really. And um, uh, Brother Bear 2 was okay i guess the hunchback of notre dame 2 uh was not it was okay cars 2 wasn't very good uh center of 2 dreams come 2 was pretty bad uh, the beauty and the beast sequels 2 and 3 were pretty damn awful as well so uh the fox and hound 2 was not great uh crunk's new groove was all right, I guess, but so I don't know about that. So, like I said, they're not really well known. Uh, they're not known for making good sequels, like at all. And this just makes no sense as to why. Why? Why would you want to do a direct-to-video sequel to a movie that has a theatrical release? And uh, oh yeah, Mulan two wasn't that good either. Not really. Oh, Lady and Tramp was terrible. I think about it, so that was definitely not a. You no, know, it was awful. But uh, but yeah, I, I didn't like those movies like at all. So there was that, I guess. So I don't know. It just seems weird. oh, Bambi two. Bambi two was kind of okay, I guess. Uh, one hundred and one Dalmatians two wasn't that great either, really. Like at all but uh but yeah they made a lot of bad sequels as one game they made a lot of horrible sequels and uh but just uh no just don't leave it alone so anyway folks okay let me just wrap things up so yeah i'm making very little progress in this game as you can see folks it's a pain in the ass i'm making very little progress here 
Um, unfortunately. Ah, damn it. Damn it all the hell, folks. And, oh yeah, the Hangover 3 was kind of okay. You know, it kind of felt like it was repeat. Taken 3 was kind of alright, I guess. Oh yeah, Terminator 3, Rise of the Machine, it wasn't very good. Oh yeah, then there was X-Men The Last Stand, the third installment. That, was, that wasn't very good, really, so there was that. And, uh, but, I don't know, maybe just me, I guess. Uh, yeah. I usually make uh, this entire thing, I guess. So, Rambo 3 was alright, I suppose. I guess. Rambo 3 was alright. But, I mean, it has moments, I guess, but it's, it's, Rambo 3 was not my favorite. Really. I don't know, maybe just me, I guess. And uh, I, won't, I won't say Ninja Turtles 3 was not good, which it isn't, but the first two movies weren't that good. The first Ninja Turtles movies was bad. The second movie was 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 worse. Things are progressing to get worse. I'm just talking about movies to start off strong, but it got worse as it went, I guess you can say. I don't know, maybe just me, I guess. And, um, I don't know, this was just comes to mind. Oh, yeah, Aliens 3. But Aliens 3 wasn't that good either, so... I don't know, folks. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of bad threes out there. A lot of worst part threes out there. Why? I mean, there's, there's some exceptions to that, obviously, but most of them, oh, bad. Uh, I don't. Pirates of the Caribbean three was okay on a good day, I guess. But um, I don't know. Oh, Robocop was not. Good. Robocop three wasn't that good. Not really. Rush Hour three was not good. I mean, I could go on, but whatever, I guess. I'm about to end this in just a moment here, folks. But yeah, for every good, for every good one third part, so like then those like 50 third parts are terrible. I'm getting that. So, uh, this plays a lot of fear because of that. So maybe, like I said, maybe should just be left alone. Maybe just me, I guess. I don't know, whatever. Alright folks, yeah, I do appreciate anybody for watching this long as video, and uh, But, um... So there we go, I guess. Anyway, so here we go. Ugh. Like I said, I'm making very little progress in this game. I want a very, very little, little progress. But anyway, like I was saying, yeah. Uh, let me see here. But yeah, folks, I just know. I should just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Oh yeah, uh, Shrek the Third was terrible. I don't like Shrek the Third really. I got all. Okay, let me see here. Yeah, Shrek the Third was not good. Oh yeah, the Never Ending Story Three wasn't that good either. Oh yeah, there's also Jaws Three, Despicable Me Three. Just to add that was in there, I guess. But yeah, anyway, let me just wrap these up, folks. Yeah, just. Yeah, let me just wrap it up here. So, yeah, folks. I appreciate people for watching. I really do appreciate the view, folks. Thank you very much. Just gonna wrap things up here. But, yeah, like I was saying, just, uh, I don't think... Yeah, so, at first, I was on board of making a part of three. I was really... Uh, yeah, at first, I was actually on board making a part of three. So, yeah. But after a while, after a good time, my own time, I said, no, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I should just leave it alone. Yes, I admit, at first I was I was for it, but now I'm not, really, because I feel like they might ruin it. It's just, maybe it's just a cast grab, nothing more. Oh, yeah, and a quick notion, and a quick thing here, in reference to what I was saying earlier, it comes to representation and having diversity. Uh, forced diversity can be just as damaging as no diversity at all. You have to be really careful on how you deliver it. Okay, she's gonna be a lesbian or whatever character. Be lesbian. There has to be more to the character than that. I mean, yes, you she like women, sure, in a romantic way or sexually, you know, attracting, that's fine. But there has to be more to the character than just that. You can't just make her be one dimensional. Just going out there. And again, just leave me one, my, just leaves me wondering, uh, my arms up in the air. Like, what, what, what are you gonna do? I mean, there was that. No, I mean, yes, there was the native character that was stuck in the enchanted forest for a number of years. You could do something with that, maybe. I don't know. Uh, again, make sure you have a diverse cast, but 
Make sure they're real written, make them three dimensional and whatnot. So again, I don't know. <sighs> Alright, folks. I appreciate I appreciate people for watching. I really do. So yes, yeah, this this has been a one long video. I appreciate everybody for watching. Obviously. So yeah. I mean there's still a lot of stuff I want to talk about, but I'll just end it here. So anyway, of course, as always, thanks for watching and take care. Until next time, I guess. Well, at least this gave me an excuse to talk about something as far as I guess. I suppose. Anyway, later. Thanks for watching. Yeah.